Hi, my name's Andreas, and we just released a new package for Total called Spring that lets you do physics-based animation in Total. Uh, so right here, I've got uh, Vakis, and I can sort of click switch to switch him between point A and point B. And so springs are a little bit different than normally when you're doing transitions or animations using CSS. Because um, normally you have this timeline and you sort of have a set duration and you want to animate something over that duration. Springs, on the other hand, are physics-based. So you provide it with the stiffness, a dampening effect, and sort of a, a simulated mass of the thing you're animating. And you're basically telling it to go over there. And it's going to use this to sort of simulate that path. Uh, so it, it isn't going to be a fixed time it takes. It kind of depends on all these factors. So we can, for example, we can increase the stiffness here. Now we can see it becomes a lot more wobbly. It becomes a lot more springy. Uh, if we also take like a little bit of the dampening, we can see that happens more. So dampening is essentially friction that just slows everything down. If we increase the dampening, we can start to see we get a lot smoother curve. So you can create some really nice sort of smooth slide in animations using this, right? Um, so why would you use, you can see some details here on the website about how to use it, right? So why would you want to use uh, a spring like this over a normal transition, for example, in total? Um, so one of the reasons could be that you want to do a staggered animation, like that's possible with transitions, but it's a little bit more finicky. Uh, so here you, with, with this, uh, because the spring is an action, you get an end event that you can hook into. So you can kind of do like one part of the animation uh, first. And then when that settles, like when it stops wobbling, right? And reaches an end position, then it'll trigger the end event and you can do the second one. So that becomes very easy. Um, but probably the most interesting thing about it is that you can um, interrupt ongoing animation. So if you're doing normal CSS animation, once you start animating, it's kind of at the place where it wants to be. Like if you try and interrupt it mids, it's it's going to give a bit of a weird effect, right? Because it, it has a whole duration and it needs to sort of finish that to go back. Or if it interrupts, it's still going to try and do the full timeline. So interrupt sort of becomes where. But with springs, because it's physics-based, it handled that really well. So here you can sort of try and drag this around. And you can see it's sort of always going to try and follow the mouse. And it'll eventually settle on if I stop moving. But as I'm moving the mouse and dragging it, it's constantly getting a new place it needs to animate to. And because it's physics-based, you get this sort of very natural feel around this. Um, the final benefit here is that you, you can animate things that aren't CSS. So, for example, we can animate a number here. Say I want to take that to 75%. And then it actually animates that number. So because springs on action and just provides these values, you can basically uh, animate anything. Um, so go check out the uh, spring.toddle.site uh, tutorials. You can just install the spring package uh, in your toddle project. Uh, each of these uh, examples you can also view in the toddle editor. So you can just open it up directly and, and sort of have a poke around and see how they're actually done, right? So here we have a button we can see. Okay, uh, there we have a button, and we can see how we're calling this spring um, action uh, every time we click them, right? Thank you for watching. Uh, go and try and build something fun with the spring package. It's really fun to play around with, and you can do a ton of weird things, like really, the sky's the limit. Thank you.